Hello, kings and queens. You're listening to Affirmations of Excellence, an offering of personal devotions to fuel your week. I am your guide, Ariel Ellis, and I'm so excited to create a space of encouragement and inspiration for each of you. The person who lives a life of excellence is one who is willing to do and to dare. As living souls made in God's image, we are not called to mediocrity. We are called to excellence. Excellence is the result of a prosperous, well-lived, and fulfilled life. And this podcast is for those who sense a royal calling on your life, those who are learning to hear God's voice and clarity and need motivation for the assignment, and who want to live out His calling with excellence. Each week, we'll explore themes of everyday life and talk through ways to escape mediocrity and find true fulfillment. Fear is one of the most common emotions known to man. It also is the most debilitating feeling any human could ever experience. Fear is unbelievably powerful. Fear penetrates the mind. It pierces the heart. It poisons the spirit and it paralyzes the soul. Fear affects you emotionally. It can cripple you mentally. It affects you spiritually and it can even impact you physically. In every situation, fear can hinder your pursuit of excellence. Better even, the fear of excellence can shift your entire perspective on life. How do we get to excellence and get over our fears? Let's dive in. Kings and Queens, be sure to share, rate, and subscribe as you listen today. In 1929, author Margaret Sherwood wrote an essay on our fear of excellence. She says, quote, He who shirks the responsibility of the greater gift, the keener insight, betrays a species of mental obliquity, a lack of vision in the striving toward excellence. The Oxford English Dictionary gives the definition of excellence as the quality of being outstanding or extremely good. Excellence has a profound meaning. Excellence is a spiritual discipline. We can all think of someone who goes above and beyond the expectation. They have a spirit of excellence. They have an outstanding quality or feature. The person who stays late without being asked. The person who gives or produces like no one else. The person who goes the extra mile in their workplace or career or relationships or in service. I am a brave soul. I always have been. But growing up, I had a few moments of fear. As a child, my great-grandmother was slightly overprotective of me, so anything that took me out of her sight resulted in an expression of concern for my well-being or a warning about my safety. Super loving and compassionate, she wasn't a fearful person, but she watched me like a hawk. Her expressions and warnings somehow embedded the existence of fear inside of me. And as a woman of extreme faith, There was still this emotional attachment to me in relation to what I could and could not do. Thankfully, I got the best of her traits, like her strength and her grace and her charisma. And the investment she made in me ended up empowering my fearlessness instead of hindering it. If we think about some of the ways we experience our upbringings, we might recall that sometimes our parents don't have the faith to believe God for the things we have faith for. Even when they want the best for us, their fear can still have the influence to talk us out of what we can do and discourage us based on what they couldn't or didn't do. I'm thankful that even as a child, I learned to be brave. I can still picture a few of those brave moments as a little girl that foreshadowed the fearless days I would face as an adult. And eventually, as I matured, My great-grandmother would witness my fearlessness and even admire it, as she'd often say with a hint of pride and satisfaction, that girl ain't scared of nothing. I still hear her words of caution today, but instead of fear, I take her perpetual voice as a sign of wisdom and discernment. As I think about her, I also think about the ancestors that preceded her, their struggles, their sacrifices, and their successes. While we're in the month of February right now and observing Black History Month in America, I am reminded of how my ancestors had to be fearless or face fear to go and fight afraid anyway. They had to stand up with their heads high and their eyes open. They had to dig for and die for the rights and the access that we deserve as a people. 
It should be my honor to relinquish my fear and forge the finish, to freely express the beauty of a life they long to live. In observation of Black History Month, I recently heard a lecture by reporter Jerry Mitchell, author of the book Race Against Time, a memoir of his pursuit of civil rights cold cases. Jerry's stories in the Jackson Clarion Ledger newspaper in Mississippi have helped put four Klansmen and an accused serial killer behind bars. His stories have also helped lead to investigations, exonerations, and the overhaul of state agencies. To date, there have been 24 convictions as a result of his reporting. As a MacArthur Fellow and a Pulitzer Prize finalist, his work played a central role in bringing killers to justice for the assassination of Mega Evers and the 16th Street church bombing in Birmingham and the Mississippi burning case. His work unearthed secret documents, found long-lost suspects and witnesses, and accumulated evidence strong enough to take on the Ku Klux Klan. In his understanding of the racism that fueled these murders, he traced it back to fear. Before people hate, they fear. And anything we fear, we dehumanize. In his talk, Jerry spoke about what he had learned about fear in his own life, the fear of telling so many stories that led to the uncovering of the culprits in these civil rights cases, saying, quote, Living fearlessly is not about living without fear. It's about living beyond fear. Am I allowed to be afraid? If I am beautifully and wonderfully made in the image of God, could I still walk through spaces with a tingling of nerves in the brain that stir up the emotion of fear? Medical professionals and scientists will say that fear is natural, but in its simplest form, fear is technically a survival instinct. Just like animals and birds have the ability to detect anxiety and threats and take actions to overcome fear, humans have a similar response. When you're afraid of something, the body responds by increasing the blood flow. Once the blood flow is increased, our muscles work faster, allowing us to think and flee. The adrenal glands pump adrenaline into our blood, causing different reactions in our body. Our reflexes become enhanced to prepare for protection, and our pupils become dilated as a sign of seeing things better for the sake of survival. A distressing emotion, fear is generally aroused by a danger, an evil, or a pain that is approaching you, whether the threat is actual or perceived. The threat can be real or it can be imaginary. Fear, to say the least, is an emotional state, a state that frightens. Fear doesn't care whether you should be afraid in the first place or not. It can make you feel frightened, even if the situation isn't entirely frightening to begin with. I have to say this, and I don't say it lightly. I say this with every ounce of faith in me at the moment. My fear does not frighten me. This does not mean I don't have fear. It means even in a season of attack, I've prayerfully learned how to acknowledge that when I am experiencing consistent fear, I'm not experiencing the excellence of God. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. This means we have the authority to speak against perpetual fear, doubt, uncertainty, timidity, and anxiety. And we have the authority to reclaim our minds and thoughts. I cannot stress this enough. Even though God's word is true all by itself, I have to tell you that in every ounce of fear I have felt tormenting my mind, I had to live beyond it and seriously pursue God to regain my peace, my memory, my sleep, my ability to concentrate and comprehend, and my hope. Fear finds safety in your comfort zone. We all have certain limits beyond which we will not venture. We feel uncomfortable with anything new or unknown, especially if it seems difficult. Fear is always lurking in the back of our minds, stopping us from getting to excellence. Does fear push you to play it safe? Does fear make you avoid anything new? Does fear freeze you within your comfort zones? Or do you live beyond fear, willing to accept the possible negative outcome and the hope that you'll achieve excellence? Take a second to think about it. There's a chance that your fear can cause you to self-destruct. Our behaviors are habitual 
The craftiness of fear can lead to self-sabotage, which can block us from our pursuit. Our fear can be an attempt to safeguard ourselves from the possibility of failure, whether disorganization, procrastination, or indecision. These behaviors immobilize us from applying excellence to our endeavors. Self-destructive habits based on fear are often rooted in our feelings of self-worth. Sometimes we don't feel like we deserve the full experience of excellence. Other times, we believe we are deserving to dwell in excellence, but as long as it doesn't intimidate or exceed the accomplishments of those in our circle. Margaret Sherwood says, quote, We must search out excellence in different times and in different places, a constantly enlarging intellectual and spiritual apprehension. We shall constantly be revising our idea concerning that which is excellent. So fear does more to dampen our destiny than we can ever realize. Sometimes just the mediocrity of fear can make you overly anxious about the future. This too is a result of the self-destruction that fear encourages. The fear in looking too far ahead with doubt and uncertainty can distract you from your current assignment, blind you from celebrating the blessings that are right in front of you, and cause you to prematurely produce a less than average result that could have been excellent in its proper time. Kings and queens, when you decide to let go of fear, you get to show folks how great God is. You get to show them what's possible when you serve and submit. You get to show them the beauty in surrendering your weaknesses, your flaws, and your faults in exchange for the polish of excellence. Beyond fear, your excellence becomes your ministry. Writer Marie Curry says, quote, Nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood. Now is the time to understand more so that we may fear less. So how do we understand more and fear less? Decide that you won't let fear hold you back. You can achieve excellence in your personal and professional life when you overcome fear. The best way to fight your fear is to never make a decision based on your fear. Being afraid will only limit your potential and never allow you to discover excellence. Decide that you will embrace your fears. Many people are unable to cope and overcome fear because they won't admit their fears. It is possible to take fear with you, embrace it, and deal with it one step at a time. This way, your fear will not haunt you, and you will not need to have the illusion of safety when you run away from a difficult situation. Decide that you won't let your feelings feed your fear. Feelings can fail you. This may sound odd, but you cannot trust your feelings all the time. Feelings are necessary, but feelings can be nebulous, and fear is one of those feelings. Fear is to be expressed then eventually exchange with peace and courage to move forward. Do not ignore your feelings and never tuck them away when needed most, but never let your feelings control you. We have to be so careful not to let our feelings of fear take over our faith. Kings and queens, if you are afraid of something, remember that God can change the nature of a thing. He makes exceptions. People qualify God by what they see in you. You cannot desire something you speak against. You must expect to win. You cannot afford to let fear make you enter your next season blindly. When you begin to see yourself in excellence, your demeanor towards fear changes. You get brave. You walk differently. You talk differently. And most importantly, you love differently. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. John chapter 4, verse 8. I'll say that again. Perfect love casts out fear. God's kind of love isn't an emotion, but a decision. Through his love, we can kill the spirit of fear, doubt, and indecision. Our hearts are made to love and not to fear. In your heart, you have to de-emphasize the fear of the unwanted and the unknown. When you relinquish fear, you begin to understand that God will distract others from your blessing in order to protect it just for you, so there's nothing to be afraid of. Fear intends to keep you from fulfilling the destiny that God has on your life. It wants to keep you from living an excellent existence full of joy where you give to others out of the overflow of the love in your heart. God is still active and present in this world. And in his word, he commands us to fear not in 365 mentions in the scriptures. 
That's a reminder from the Bible that every day of the year, we can let go of fear. He keeps his promises, and therefore, we don't have to be overcome by fear because we have the assurance of his promise. Now that we've moved closer to excellence and further away from our fears, let's pursue these affirmations for the week. Say this with me. I will no longer rehearse my fears. Love will always trump fear. The next season of my life will require a new narrative. I will not allow the fears of my past to torment my future. I must relinquish fear and grab on to faith. I have nothing to be afraid of. Kings and queens, may you be fully equipped to master excellence in the world this week. Go be excellent and don't forget your crowns.